Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're going to paint a hanging basket full of petunias. So grab your paints and let's get started. You never know where inspiration's going to hit. I literally walked past a hanging basket uh, of flowers yesterday and I asked my friend, oh, what are those? And she said, oh, they're petunias. So lo and behold, we're going to paint a hanging basket of petunias in my sort of controlled loose style. So what I'm doing, I'm just drawing a the curved base which is going to be our hanging basket but that's all we need because now we're just gonna have a bit of fun with the actual flower painting bit so um, the petunias I saw were all sorts of colors and so that's exactly what we're going to do so I'm gonna begin by having a go at a pink one I've got a size zero brush and I'm going to just create a sort of flower shape of a petunia by sort of creating the edges of these petals. It's a very sort of open round flower but it does have separate petals as much as it looks but then what's the cool thing is this center so I've done that quite wet so that I can then pop a dab of color into the middle and you see that was literally a single dab of color let's do another one so I've got my size zero brush and it's quite a good one for this and I'm just sort of feeling my way around the edge of these petals and you can sort of shape it as you go it doesn't have to be perfect in the slightest in fact I quite like the idea that we're going to have a few slightly funny shaped ones and of course we're going to have ones that sort of face a little bit upwards and off at a sort of three-quarter angle so one like this where it's going to be, look a bit like it's been squashed we're just sort of seeing it half on and then I've got alizar and crimson I'm just gonna dab that into the center into the center both times so I'm gonna place it a few of those and then we're gonna try some different colors now I've got ones that look a bit like fried eggs here um, what I've got is this mixture here actually turns into that on the page because it's all about being dilute so this is a mixture of sap green cadmium yellow um, and then just a little bit of Payne's grey but the key thing is there is a lot of water in the palette to dilute it right down into something that is really quite invisible on the page so I'm just painting I find now just to give it a bit of time to seep into the page I paint one then move on to another one whilst that one's drying. And then I've got cadmium yellow, which is a great thick, opaque color. And that's just bleeding and blending out really nicely. So I'm gradually creating this sort of shape um, by using the different colors. This one here is cobalt violet, and then very dilute. And then I'm adding in a mixture of French ultramarine blue and cobalt violet, much more concentrated. But you see the ones in the center are really nice and open. The ones towards the side are much more sort of squashed down. Um, and it gives us a very clear sense of the flowers that are on the edge of things. Now there was one petunia, which I just thought was the coolest thing ever in this basket of flowers that I saw. Um, and I'm going to mix up an extremely dilute color here in the sort of pale pink and create the flower shape and I'm going to attempt to paint this sort of two-tone they almost look like sort of um, sweets like candy sweets with a stripe down the middle I'm going to take my four tenths brush get a little bit of concentrated permanent rose and just from the edge come down into the middle 
and I think that should maintain a, a level of the stripe. It'll be pretty pretty loose but it'll do what I want it to do. So the key thing here is even though I'm painting very dilute flower first I'm not overloading the page with water and that means that although the paint will absolutely feather it should just about maintain its form it's not going to completely disappear now it's probably going to be a bit more of a challenge doing one of those on the side let's see the other nice thing is because the other flowers have dried I can go right up to the edge of some of those so it's very important that this pink here is, is concentrated for it to show up that's pretty good so I'm nearly done I'm just going to fill in one or two more of these stripy flowers and then we can start putting in our foliage and our actual basket work we've let everything dry and it's now time to add in some leaves I've mixed up sap green and cobalt turquoise just to get a slightly fresh green um, that is what sort of I feel a petunia leaf looks like and then I'm going to use my size zero brush and some of my smaller brushes to start to fill in some leaves around and about the flowers. So I'm going to begin by sort of placing in some nice sort of fairly broad leaves and I mean you might want to go down a few sizes if you're going to then need to get right in the cracks and crevices which is inevitable. That's why having yourself a set of a few of the much smaller brushes is quite useful because you can still do a really nice leaf shape there. Uh, but we are going to have a few that sort of overlap over our flowers and don't worry if at the moment it feels like the flowers show up still because we're going to be coming in and adding in detail all around about so what I'm doing is I'm sort of looking for the areas where I can put in leaves that sort of don't disturb the flowers too much because it would be a shame to completely um, come in and, and sort of disrupt things um, but the leaves sort of they they've got um they're sort of smooth sided and they poke up and out and what I'm sort of leading towards is these these stems that are showing a, a be the beginning of a growth of a new flower. So this one here and the way I'm doing it is I'm just using both the sort of tip of my brush and then just being able to squish it down place in the greenery but then there might be times where you just want you want the flowers to be the main event so you can just paint around them but essentially what we want to do is we want to be creating a nice well, I'd like a sort of fairly even shape for this hanging basket. You don't have to do a, a completely even one. You could have bits sort of poking out at all angles, but that's how I'm going to attempt it. As we start to fill it up, it gets a bit trickier to sort of place things in without them overlapping and blending into each other. So what we do now is we're going to mix up just a slightly stronger colour, slightly sort of more concentrate and I'm also going to have some sap green with a little bit of French ultramarine in as well and we're now going to build another layer of leaves that just fills everything out a little bit more. So 
poor example because the leaves sort of tumble out on top of each other. So at the back here, let's have a look. I'm just trying to find trying to find places to <laughs> pop them in. So yep, so we might add in another one. Just here. And maybe some of these um little sapling bits can just have a bit more a bit more concentrated colour on them. Well, we can always go over that. So we're just building up the colour and filling in the space until we're going to have a lovely full arrangement of petunias and foliage and then we can put in the actual basket. For the basket I'm mixing up burnt sienna and Payne's grey. And we want to create a sense of roundness with the basket. So I've got a size zero brush and I'm going to paint in these little lines that just kind of follow the line of the roundness of the basket. It doesn't have to be completely perfect but we just need to make sure we're getting in a sense of the curve and I'm just sort of almost doing almost like brickwork just in the gaps and those little bits of unpainted space make all the difference we get up closer to the basket we're going to have to start to use a smaller brush that's why I started sort of halfway down so now I am going to be using my four tenths brush so that when I come across a flower like that, I can just use the tiny brush to get around. Because this is quite a dark colour we're using, so... And that's the other beauty of the little bits of unpainted space that we've had already in the basket it means having little bits of unpainted gap towards the top is far more sort of acceptable it's these last stages where we can add in little details that really make these flowers and uh, leaves come alive. So what I've got is some Payne's Grey mixed with Alizar and Crimson and I'm popping in a little bit in the centre of my uh, sort of crimsony flowers and then I'm just using my four tenths brush to do a tiny little fan sort of star out to the petals because you'll notice petunias do have, in some of them at least, a little line 
Um, so I'm just working out what colour to use for each of them. I think I'll use a little bit of green. It's important not to be too heavy with these. Try and flick that little line out to the side. It doesn't need to be every single one. Just clean your brush off and come back in and do a little bit of a blend if it's a little bit much. Um, and if you want, you could just add a bit of Payne's Grey to the petal mix that you had. You don't need much for the little flick. And I think for my little sort of sweetie ones, I'll just put a little bit of that same colour in the middle. And that's just brought them out to life I think um, and then for the leaves themselves a little bit of Payne's Grey added to one of the leaf mixes just to make a really nice deep dark colour and then you can either use a you could use a rigger brush if you wanted just make sure it's clean from the previous project so all these brushes are for sale in my Etsy store in my web shop The rigger brush is just fairly revolutionary for me, especially when it comes to leaf detail because it just manages to be so effortlessly slender. Look at that. So as you can see, again, I'm not doing every single one, but then what I will do so I will just dilute that right down, maybe add even more Payne's Grey and I just want a slightly more regular shadow colour, so a little bit of blue, a uh, brown. Just getting that right shadow colour, I think we need some actual blue in there, there we go. Okay, but I'm making it very dilute. What I want to do is just create that bit of shade for the areas right down below here, onto the basket, but also onto some of the leaves as well. Might be a few gaps. I'm not worrying about putting a uh, shadow in every white gap, but it's just more for this underside here and a little bit then on the basket as well. And finally, we can add in uh, some kind of chain. So I've got a central top point here. So it might sort of go in three times, not sure. And it's up to you really how you want to paint in your hanging basket. You might want to do a little chain. So I'm just doing two little sort of brackets in a bit of fairly dilute sort of grey shadowy colour. got to remember that they're going to sort of get hidden in at some point so it's where you want to see them go and making sure that they show up enough
And there we have a lovely hanging basket of petunias. Thanks so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I want to say a massive thank you to my patrons for their support because it enables us to create videos like this that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on with it. And of course if you never want to miss another video then hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell. Okay until next time, bye!